Welcome back, Breakaway Wealth. I'm your host, Jim Oliver, and with me today is Jim Pakoulis. Jim, welcome. Jim, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Jim, just uh, get, get us kicked off. Uh, introduce yourself to the audience. Tell us a little bit about you and what you're doing sure. and where you're at and all that kind of fun stuff. Happy to. I am the CEO and chairman of Boosh Plant-Based Brands. Uh, Boosh is a, uh, a, a plant-based, non-GMO, gluten-free, heat-and-eat uh, series of meals, uh, refrigerated, frozen, and then we have shelf-stable uh, we also just acquired Beanfields, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So I oversee the company uh, and help help uh, with the management and the structure and the financing and the growth of Boosh plant-based brands. And Jim, did my wife set this interview up? <laughs> uh, you know, my wife maybe would be a better uh, interviewer uh, because she would be able to, this podcast would probably last two hours long though, because Everything you just said, it sounded like if it was coming out of my wife's mouth, as far as a plant-based, non-GMO, organic, it would have, uh, I'd go, oh, okay, I'm totally in line with that. I understand. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, okay, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's a huge market. You see all these things happening today. And, and you know, so I want to I would attack this and ask questions, and I want you to answer from do, two different things running this emerging business and how you see the future, you know, and, and obviously if I'm in your business, I'm excited about the future because I'm thinking this is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then also, um, um, you know, so business owner, but also then the health benefits, you know, when I want to attack both of those, those uh, subjects, is there anything else, Jim, that we should, that we should attack while we're, we're, we're going that direction. No, I think you're spot on. I, I, it, let's let's go after those two two different uh, subject matters. So let's first start off. How did you start the business? I mean, or or, or give us kind of your professional background. Were you in business before? This is a, a you know the the you know the the evolution of several businesses, or how did it start? Yep. Uh, so my background is uh, being in the emerging space in, in the public arena. So I was fortunate enough to be one of the first individuals to uh, be a CEO of a publicly traded company in the cannabis sector back in 2010. In fact, I did a reverse merger uh, and and uh, and and taken over Weed Maps. Uh, we we took Weed Maps public and went from zero to about sixteen million in two years. Uh, took a lot of arrows, you know, being the first one in a in a in a in a growing uh, and you know somewhat divisive industry. Uh, but it was a great learning curve. So basically, for the last twelve years, I've been in the corner suite, either president or CEO, or in one of those capacities. Uh, my my team and I like to look for for uh, industries that we believe are going to have significant growth over the next five to ten years. And several years ago, we started looking into a variety of different industries and came across a plant based sector and and found it to be just fascinating, almost righteous. Uh, and so we then decided to go ahead and identify a company that we wanted to put our our expertise behind capital management, help it, help with the infrastructure and grow and take public. And so we came across Boosh plant-based brands. Boosh was formed by Connie Marples. Connie, uh, as a side note, is a celiac, so she's very sensitive in regards to what she can eat. And so a couple of years ago, she created these beautiful plant-based meals uh, and literally started driving around Vancouver area where she's based and, uh, and got it into the grocery stores. Um, so we, we uh, formed a relationship with Connie and did an IPO initial public offering in May of 2021 on the Canadian Securities Exchange. And the ticker is VEGI. So that's the background in regards to how we, we identified and, and found Boosh and now are growing Boosh. Um, they're in probably 600 stores now throughout Canada. Uh, and then we just acquired uh, a bean fields, which is in over 7,000 grocery stores throughout the United States, uh, which is a, a bean based chip, uh, comparable to a Dorito, except much, much better for you. You know, I, I'm not sure I could go to my pantry right now and those be there, but they have been in my pantry. So I, all right. And I would agree with you. They're very good. And normally you know, when I first met my wife, um, she was, oh, we can only eat organic and this. And I was a single dad that was 
Hey, when's, um, you know, when's chicken breast on sale? Okay. Grab that. What do you mean? I'm not paying $7 or whatever it was back then for chicken breast, you know, like right. it was, you know, three times the money. And, uh, you know, she's converted me over the years on all of this stuff, but, um, uh, I think that's, that's really great. cool. And I'll tell you what, what I would say is the, the, the organic, the non-GMO, the it's, it, it, all of it is getting better and better and better. It seems like every day is every yes. time you try something, you're like, oh my gosh, I almost would prefer that over Doritos, you know, or something, yes. you know? Yes, bingo, very well stated. And and I think we're seeing that this disruptive movement in the plant based, excuse me, in the animal protein based sector, more towards plant based sector. Um, so, but yeah, and, and there are three, in my opinion, there are three reasons for that taste, price and availability and now as you just clearly referenced we have the taste down price points are, are equal uh, on many occasions to uh, a very processed type of product that we're used to having and then convenience they're in all the stores now so it's working yeah you know i think you get a more of an honest uh you know like let's say with doritos maybe the price doesn't look like it's gone up but the volume of product inside the bag has gone way down so you know <laughs> You yeah. can you can inflate things any way you want, but it's yeah. still inflation, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, or or you can uh, debase things any way you want, but you're still going to end up with less for the same yep. price. Um, I think so. so if you look into the future, and you know, there's so many things happening, um, and uh, I would think that this sector has to just grow and grow and grow. But you you. you and I want you to come back to that, but I also, you know, let's talk about these emerging markets because, you know, I, 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 I understand what you're saying because I have uh, several companies in the um, Bitcoin space, primarily in Bitcoin mining, and that's kind of an emerging market. And sometimes there are weeks, months that are scary because it's like, Hey, here's where I think Bitcoin is going. Now I know this is different than plant-based because I think I think there's a chance Bitcoin is going to become a dominant currency in in the world. But I know that it's going to have a certain market share. I think plant-based is it's whether it's going to be eighty percent or fifty percent. I mean, it's just it's just what's the percentage. So um, and then on on the on the cannab you know on cannabis, you it seemed like we had this big wave of states and then. I, I thought that the feds would, you know, um, uh, finally kind of catch up, but I, and it came kind of seems like it stalled there. So one, where did this, where did this interest come from, you know, like in your past for these emerging markets, or is it just because, Hey, if I'm going to get in business, I want to get into business that's going up and, and exploding. So talk about maybe there's yeah. maybe three questions in there. <laughs> um, the, 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 it's the latter. Uh, what you just referenced. It's, it's, I'd rather be in a business that's, that we believe is going to have a long-term uh, um, bullish run. Uh, and, and also uh, an industry that it's, it's almost righteous, right? You're, you're doing something really good for yourself, as you just referenced, and, and because of your lovely wife, uh, you're doing something very good for the animal kingdom, and you're doing something wonderful for the limited resources called planet Earth. And, and all of those collide together in the plant-based sector and and so referencing another portion of your question you know what what is what's really moving this what, what is causing this transformation and i see it as the the young the young uh younger generation the millennials the gen x the gen y's the gen z's they're the ones that ha that seem to be far more conscientious as to what goes into their body uh, uh, far more than than you probably your generation certainly my generation and they they truly care about the resources that we have, the limited resources and the, and the population growth and obviously the animal kingdom. As an example, it takes about 10 times more water to create a animal patty hamburger than it does a plant burger. Now, I, I go to Carl's Jr's and I get the Beyond Meat burger and fries and 
and soda. And yeah, fries and soda isn't that great for you, but at least I'm not eating that animal. And it tastes the same to me, just like an animal uh, patty. So um, you have this huge transformation, this huge body of people that are moving the needle. Um, and I see this industry, and I think this is the third leg of your question. I see this industry not it's significantly growing. I think it was relatively slow from say 1990 to say 2015. And then around 2015, we saw this, this, this explosive growth. We were just at a um, expo down in Anaheim a couple of months ago, and there was probably, I don't know, 8,000 exhibitors. Each of them had their products. And you're right, the, the food tastes fantastic. There was not one booth that I tried where the food was, ugh, I wouldn't buy this. I would have bought them all. I mean, just it's, it's great. So and the, and it, to conclude on that, I, I see um, the industry going into the hundreds of billions, if not, you know, maybe not trillions, but certainly in the hundreds of billions of dollars over the next 30 to 40 years. We're seeing grocery stores that are expanding their frozen sections because they want to go ahead and accommodate more plant based meals, obviously less preservatives mean that has to be frozen. So when you have this movement, the real money being put into TI and to tend an improvement, and then you have the major change, the major fast foods, the McDonald's and Wendy's, and one well, not Wendy's, but certain Burger King, Starbucks, Pizza Hut, um, uh, Taco Bell, they're all going to plant-based, having plant-based items on the menu. So I think yeah. it's really gotten a foothold and I think it's just going to continue and grow. So one of the things that I say about, um, the blockchain, Bitcoin, is we're kind of in that 1994 for the internet. There was, you know, there's no Google, there's <laughs> no Amazon, there's none right. of that. And I see the uh, the plant based business the same way. Is is this is the time to get in if you can get in? So, what opportunities are there out there for the audience listening and? Primarily, I mean, this this podcast is to open, uh, to get everybody out of the herd, so to speak, not, you know, the herd uh, being uh, being herded financially, right? But also the herd in, um, I don't think there's anybody that looks at it and says, you know what, I think slaughtering animals, that, that totally makes sense. I mean, nobody likes that. Even the people that are doing it, I don't think like it. Yeah. You know, and, it, and there was always this small section of people that had turned their stomach enough that they wouldn't eat it, right? Because right. They, they had to eat in people's minds. They're eating tofu and they're eating, you know, stuff that didn't taste that good. And they're uh, salads every, you know, and, and, and I remember when I was I, way back in the 80s, I ran the Gold Gyms in Kansas City. And the only vegetarian that we had she was super skinny, low energy. And it was like, well, you need some protein. You need, you know, you need more of this. And now all of that is just so much different and has evolved so much that uh, it's, it's exciting. And from a business standpoint, how can somebody in the audience uh, get on this train? Uh, from, from a financial standpoint or for, for them to go ahead and start eating? Both, or both. both yeah. Sure. Uh, from a financial standpoint, I urge everyone to do their due diligence, obviously, before investing. Make sure you uh, you understand what you're investing into. My world is small cap emerging marketplace. Uh, you're not clipping coupons. You're you're you know, it, it's uh, it's a little more aggressive in my world. But with that said, uh, we trade on the uh, as I mentioned, the Canadian Securities Exchange, VEGI. We also trade on the exchange uh, trade on the exchange OTC here in the United States. Uh, VGGIF is the ticker. So I would certainly urge anyone to take a look. I think we're, we're significantly undervalued right now, uh, especially since we closed on the Beanfields transaction. From a, uh, a standpoint of how can I get involved, the majority of people, as you just referenced, are not vegan or vegetarian. They're, they're uh, people are getting more like me and you, flexitarians, which are, we want to try this. And, and now it's easy to go to the grocery store. So it's just as simple as going to the grocery store, pick up your chicken, pick up your fish, whatever it may be. But then go ahead and explore the, the organic section of the grocery store. Um, and you'll find some unbelievable products there, including uh, hopefully you'll find Boosh uh, at the grocery store. So uh, it's very, very easy, accessible, tastes great, price points are right. So there's no reason not to try plant-based foods. So, you know, one, uh, one of the things we do uh, every week is we have Taco Tuesday. 
I'm telling you, if you put taco seasoning and you put the beyond, I mean, you, you, yeah. I, I promise you, you can't tell the difference. Exactly. You know? um, and, and I always think the same thing, especially if you get a, uh, you know, we just do it in like lettuce wraps. And again, I don't miss the chip, you know, it's really when you yep. get some good pico, you get some, you know, you know, the seasonings in there, it's like, wow, this is good. You know, yeah. uh, so and you uh, hit you hit you hit on uh, 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 Beyond Meat, right? You, you use Beyond Meat yeah. as the crumble. We use that in our two of our products, vegan yeah. uh, veggie bolognese and, and shepherd's pie. Uh, and it's you're exactly right. You can't tell the difference. It tastes fantastic. So people can go. These are like the meals are heat up. Just heat up the meals. They're already yep. prepared for you and everything else. Yep. You know, again, we've been doing that more um, with the uh, to a, like a delivery place that's local. They bring the meal pop it, you know, you, you heat it up and you eat it. And I'm telling you, it's good. And, you know, people would say to me, like, when I said I was going to do that, one of my friends said, Oh, I did that for a while. You get really bored. And it's like, I haven't gotten bored. I mean, they, they change up the menu uh, all the time. And so you get creative. I think that's another thing that you do um, when you change. And some of the, some of the, the meals and things that, that you, that you produce, you never maybe would have thought about, and, um, you know, when you have pizza and, you know, you got meat lovers pizza, you could have a meat lovers pizza with no meat on it. And you wouldn't know the difference in my opinion, but, um, shit. Yep. so, um, um, you know, this is, this is, I really like, uh, having you on here, Jim, because this is something totally different than what we normally talk about. We normally talk about how to build wealth and how to, but if you're going to build wealth, right. Then you want to live longer, right. Be healthier, be <laughs> And I live in Southwest Florida and I see people in their seventies and eighties and beyond. And I see some of them and I think, man, I want to be like that when I'm 80. Right. right. And I see yeah, others exactly. and I go, Oh my gosh, I'm so, um, I feel so bad for that person. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. and then they're just waiting to die. I don't want to wait to die. I want to live and be healthy and, you know, it's movement. And then also uh, treating your body and whatever you put into your body, making sure that it's, not going to kill you. And there's a lot of uh, evidence that this is a healthier way to eat. And like you said, just incorporate some of it in there. Right. And then let That's it grow. Right. So exactly. Um, all right, Jim. So um, um, is there a website that you would recommend that people could go to and, and, yeah, please go to Boosh Food, singular food, BooshFood.com, uh, or you can go to Beanfields.com. You can go to either website and check out all of our products, and I think you'll fall in love with them. I hope yeah. you'll fall in love with them. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, Jim, it sounds like you've done a lot of different things in your life and a lot of emerging businesses and opened, uh, you know, new ideas and, um, um, and new concepts and kind of want to be on the front edge of these things. So I'm sure there's been some books in your life that have made a big difference. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question. I ask everybody is if God came down from heaven and said, you could only retain the, the knowledge that you've, that you've obtained from one book outside of the Bible, what would that book be? It would be a um, book on Washington. Okay. George Washington. Yeah. All right. I, I just, uh, I got done. I do, I travel a lot. So I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and I just got done with, it's a 42 hour audiobook on, on Washington and, uh, just fascinating. And history really does repeat itself. It's amazing. Uh, the various episodes that took place, whether he was general Washington in war or whether he was president Washington and you, you overlay what's taking place today and it's like, you, you know, change it from 17, uh, you know, 89 to 2022 and you, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference on some things. Uh, but he was just, just spectacular. He was, he refused to allow his ego to get in the way. And uh, I think he was so transformative in how we got the greatest country in the world. And I, I attribute a lot of that to George Washington. You know, it's interesting about that. And I'm sure that I don't know 42 hours of information on Washington. Okay. So, but, but one thing I always think about him is, is persistence, you know, is, yeah. is just talk about just a persistent individual, a persistent human and yep. um, through, setbacks and you know oh you know this is going to blow up 
the, the, his career and, and all of these things that happened to him. And, and, it's, and, and he really kind of epitomizes the, it's not what happens to you, it's what you do with it, right? And, and you're exactly. right. If you don't let your ego get in the way, yep. then you just keep moving forward. And, yep. uh, and it's really, I agree with you. I, I mean, that 42 hours scares the heck out of me. But because uh, if I see one that's 13 hours, it scares me. But uh, but because I don't spend, I, I, I work out of my house and I um, I drive my golf cart to the golf course. <laughs> and, you know, I just, my, my commuting is no longer. Uh, but uh, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to check it out. And uh, we'll put the name of the book in the link in the show notes. Um, Jim, any famous last words? Uh for, for anybody uh, it, it going into business, anybody wanting to do business, anybody that's uh, engaged in business, just uh, just uh, dignity. Keep your dignity. Keep your dignity. I love that. I love keep, that. Keep your, walk your talk. Love that. That is great. Those are, that's great advice. Jim, thank you so much for being on and spending time with us.